Welcome to this video on the important dates for April's astrology. And as many of you know, this is just the nuts and bolts of what's happening astrologically in April. And if you want to see how I view these events in the context of news and current events, I will have a separate video. So make sure that you have subscribed and activated the bell for notifications so that you are notified when that gets released if you are interested. It is commentary. But for those of you who just want the facts, ma'am, here it is. And so let me say that this month, as we are in Aries season, we have started the new astrological year. Can you feel it? It is just some really um, exciting energy, in my opinion. I love this time of year. Um, and overall, it's a great time for starting something new or taking a chance that maybe you didn't have the confidence to take in months prior. Because right now, we're not dealing with any major retrogrades at this time. So the sky might be the limit, if not for you, for others. So do watch out because there will be themes this month of self versus others, especially with the lunar cycle coming up this month involving the Aries new moon and the Libra full moon. But on the positive, this is going to give a great opportunity for opening up some conversations that perhaps you weren't so confident about having last month. And there's a good chance that these conversations can lead to compassion and understanding. Now, with the lunar cycles in Aries and Libra, bringing up these themes of self versus others, there's possibly something about yourself that you're needing to embrace more at the beginning of this month. But by mid-month, something about others or your relationship with others that you're having to release. But ideally, I believe this energy is purposed to help us find the right balance between our own independence versus interdependence with others. Just be careful this month about false optimism, overestimating oneself and unrealistic expectations. Procrastination might also be an issue, um, but if difficulties come up, it's probably advised that you take more of a mature approach by being more, you know, deliberate and decisive. And that's going to get easier as the month progresses into more Taurus energy. But I do have to say, buckle up, <laughs> because we're also having our first eclipse of this year in Taurus at the end of this month. So that's ushering in some holy shifts having to do with the practicalities of life. So the month starts off with a new moon in Aries. And this is a fantastic time to kickstart new projects, embark upon new beginnings, with a newfound courage to move in a desired direction. And if you want to take action on something or try something new, now is the time. Finding happiness and self-reliance is also a key theme with this energy. So it's a good time to make some important changes within ourselves. You're probably going to be more open now to taking risks and learning through experience. Same with others. You're going to be a lot more inclined to see life as an adventure and to express yourself more authentically without apology. There's definitely going to be some moves made around this new moon in Aries especially with the moon aligning with Mercury, people's mindset could be very ballsy around this time. But also with Mars conjunct Saturn, there could be perplexing fears about who's on top. So what can you accomplish within the next, say, two weeks, if you put your mind to it? What ruts can you break out of over the next two weeks? But that's something that would be good to think on around the first and definitely set those intentions. Those most affected by this lunar energy will probably be the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Now on the second, the sun will be conjunct Mercury and Aries. And so this is going to add more of an assertive conversational style, which could border on being aggressive. So careful with that, right? There's, there's pros and cons to this. Use wisely. And then on the fourth, Mars conjunct Saturn and Aquarius, well, might be a day of difficulties, delays. Uh, so if you are coming up against some obstacles, it's likely that those obstacles will be overcome by making some plans and having a level of consciousness towards the bigger picture, not just being in the now, but looking at the bigger, far reaching picture. On the fifth, Venus enters Pisces and it will remain there until May 2nd. And this is a beautiful energy. Venus is exalted in Pisces, so intuition will be heightened along with emotions and imaginations. By the way, shout out to those of you who <laughs> were born with this placement in your chart, Venus and Pisces, much love to you. <laughs> okay, but 
energetically, collectively, we're all going to be feeling this energy. So it's going to be a great time to connect with the divine and to get some divine downloads. Just be careful of the shadow aspect of this energy, which is idealism, right? These unrealistic expectations that are common with this energy and also blurred boundaries. Be careful with maybe allowing deception and evasiveness where you fall prey to these things because I'm just going to say as someone who's born with this placement in my natal chart, I intuitively knew, I, you know, the divine downloads were there, but anytime I really fell prey to deception, I look back and, and I knew I had everything I needed to know the truth, but I fell prey to it because I believed what I wanted to believe. So careful with that. What is it that you want to believe? Because sometimes that's your Achilles heel. On the positive in relationships, this energy is going to have people a lot more open to practicing compassion and forgiveness. And in romance, people are a lot more open to seduction and being seductive. So this could just be a time of tenderness and affection for some, which is a beautiful thing. But for others, it could be a time of longing for something that is amiss in their lives. And it might not be something necessarily romantic. It might not be something that they can articulate very well. It might be something that is hard to put their finger on or something they feel that is evading them. So be careful about that energy April 5th through May 2nd. Now on the 9th, the moon is waxing in Cancer. So consider at this time the projects that perhaps you started with the new moon in Aries on the 1st or what new initiatives did you take during that time? Because you may find around the 9th that they, these things now require a lot more effort in TLC. Tender love and care, that is. On the 10th, Mercury enters Taurus and will be there until April 29th. And it'll go back into Taurus again May 22nd through June 13th. So definitely over the next couple of months, we are dealing with this mercurial energy impacting our thoughts and our speech, giving it this very Taurus flair where... People become less assertive than when Mercury was in Aries, less aggressive, which, you know, could be a nice thing. Uh, it gets more down to earth and practical in Taurus. And people's thinking begins to focus more on the financial and material realm during this time. On the positive, this gives people a lot more common sense uh, or more of an inclination towards practicing what is considered tried and true. Just be careful about inflexible thinking. On the 12th, Jupiter is conjunct Neptune, and yeah, they're both in Pisces. So, by the way, this occurs once every 13 years. The last time we had this was in 2009. So think about what was going on in 2009 for you. Now, in Pisces, where this is occurring, Jupiter really increases and expands sensitivity, but it can also do the same for deception. Beware of that. This marks the beginning of a new 13-year cycle of having increased spiritual and creative expansion for the collective. There will be themes of idealism versus practicality that come to the forefront with this energy. On the positive, people are entertaining possibilities like never before. On the negative, this can bring about strong feelings of discontent and disappointment, possibly because there are some reality checks being made against our expectations. Advice? Be realistic in your expectations, especially when we're talking about legal and money matters. Consider also what's needed to increase trust in yourself and others and in God or the universe, especially if trust has been damaged. Those of you who are wanting to do some healing work this month with this energy would probably benefit from going to the ocean if you can, or near a body of water, you know, maybe a lake or a riverbed. Try to also maybe walk barefoot in nature. Uh, some of you maybe um, indulge in, in watching movies, film, fantasy if you can. But, you know, just be careful about getting too far off into uh, escapism, right? Because this could get into a dark zone of, especially if, if you're doing that with drugs or alcohol, not going to be positive. And yes, some people will seek escapism, Neptuning out through drugs and alcohol around this time, more so than usual. And so be aware of that. Additionally, I could see people Neptuning out also with the media. Be aware of grand scale lies 
propaganda in media during this time. If you want to hear more about that, that will be in my commentary portion. Another video coming up next on the astrology for next month. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I'm trying to keep this just on nuts and bolts, but this is a very important time around the 12th where you need to watch out for deception. There's there's a positive and, and a not so positive use of Jupiter conjunct Neptune and Pisces. Now around the 14th, 15th, Mars enters into Pisces until May 24th. And so people in terms of asserting themselves and taking action and whatever efforts are made during this time, it's going to take on a more adaptable tone, a more compassionate tone. The downside is that this can be a very indecisive, procrastinating energy. So beware of that. I'm hearing lazy, by the way. <laughs> Watch out for laziness. Now on the 16th, with a full moon in Libra, consider what you started around the first with that moon in Aries. What are you now wrapping up or seeing the results from? How do supportive partnerships and relationships factor into this? Has there been a conflict between yourself and others during the last two weeks? Full moons often have to do with completions or releasing emotional energy. So yes, you know, there could be some heightened emotions and drama in relationships. They might, might come out, especially as we are getting closer and closer to the end of the month with that solar eclipse in Taurus. On the positive with this lunar energy on the 16th, you could have deeper insights into yourself and what you need from others. And matters of being self-directed versus compromising with others may have come up to really illuminate that. Issues of independence versus interdependence, autonomy versus companionship. These themes might have been quite prevalent the first two weeks of April. And its energy is pushing you to strike the right balance between the two. So diplomatic negotiations in the first two weeks of this month might have been very key. This is about not losing yourself to other, nor others losing due to yourself. And from this time frame, you may have made some major improvements to restructure your life in order to release limitations and burdens put upon yourself and others. Those most affected by this energy are the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, also the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Now on the 18th, Mercury will be conjunct Uranus in Taurus. So could be a difficult time of irritation, anxiety for some people, because it could be that you're becoming more cognizant of the need for change and the same with others. Maybe the need for radical sudden change, which Taurus does not like. Oh, I can tell you, I'm a Taurus rising. We don't like it. <laughs> it's a fixed sign, right? And, and Taurus needs security. Taurus needs stability. Those needs are very strong in Taurus. So the desire also, despite difficulties pushing you to get away from what you have maybe put your sense of security in, might be false. Well, the desire to endure may also be strong with the sun in Taurus during this time on the 19th. All right, the following day when it moves into Taurus. So realize Taurus can stay stuck on the familiar and very bullheaded in letting go of things that it probably should because it has a core value of longevity. Now on the positive, this energy could cause people to have thinking that is a lot more alert and quick-witted. Now on the 19th, with the sun in Taurus, till May 20th, we get into Taurus season. And happy birthday to those of you that are Taurus sun, Taurus rising. This energy is highlighting more the practicalities of life, the material realm, the financial realm, those sides of life. And this is an energy that calms and slows down more. It's less impatience that we saw in Aries season towards more patience in Taurus season. There's less impulsivity and more careful, deliberate pace. On the 23rd, the moon is waning in Aquarius. So this is the closing of the Aries lunar cycle. And it could be that during this time, there's something that you realize you need to emotionally disconnect from or withdraw from or pull away from. On the 27th, Venus conjunct Neptune, very favorable with love and romance, spirituality, expressing oneself uh, creatively through arts. Just be careful with over-idealization during this time. If you are outdating, you might meet someone or maybe someone in your life is showing a love that is just too good to be true. Try to stay grounded because it could be that perhaps you're not seeing something clearly or fully with that Neptunian energy. I think whatever it is, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good, whatever it is. And that's good. We need more of that, right? 
Now, on the 29th, Mercury enters Gemini until May 22nd, and it'll go back into Gemini June 13th through July 5th this summer. So this mercurial energy is at home in Gemini, but it will go retrograde in early May. And when it goes retrograde, you'll likely revisit some ideas and choices that you have made. In Gemini, communications are sharper, but as I said, this might require some reworking over time because of the retrograde. Also, because this energy somewhat enjoys superficial knowledge over wisdom, okay? And, and what, what is the difference between that? You know, wisdom is knowledge and truth and experience. It's, it's applying the truth to everyday life. But Mercury in Gemini is more of the person who revels in the factoids without really putting the pieces together, looking at the bigger picture and understanding the truth, the whole truth, and how it needs to be applied to everyday life. So be careful during this time of, I'm hearing information overload as I'm sitting with this energy. Be careful with distractions, nervous chatter, verbal sparring over BS, things that don't matter. Uh, again, like, I don't mean to offend anybody, but, you know, people arguing, spending hours arguing over flat earth theory. I mean, what difference does it make? <laughs> you know, we got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> so that was just a side note example of how this might manifest. I mean, if you are getting into arguments with people over during this time, is it worth arguing about? Or is this people intellectualizing for matters of ego? <laughs> Now, on the same day, Pluto is going retrograde in Capricorn until October 8th. So we're dealing with this for the next five months, okay? And yes, we this is the beginning of us getting into retrograde season. Not a huge deal. It happens every year at about this time. Initially, this energy might feel a bit confusing, but ultimately, it's going to be helpful in revealing exactly what you need to be reworking in your life right now. And it could be a difficult matter that maybe you've thought about or talked about quite a bit. It could also be a matter that is heavy or has somehow forced you to focus on bringing powerful change in your life. If you want to know what area of life this is impacting, look at where Pluto is transiting in your natal chart during this time. The positive use of this energy is that over the next five months, it's helping you to gain more insight. Maybe research things if you need to glean more information and knowledge about how to resolve this issue, how to come at this from another angle. But it's also a positive energy for considering how self-destructive tendencies and power dynamics in yourself and others have impacted your life. And that moves you to consider how you might use your personal power more constructively in the future. Now on the 30th, we've got this new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. And I don't know if you're already feeling it. I am, and I'm filming this in late March. So I say these energies emanate particularly big ones like eclipses. You are definitely, if you're not feeling it now, definitely from the 30th and the six months that follow it, eclipses will unfold. And some people will feel them more intensely than others, but you will likely be feeling it over the next six months. So if you don't feel the hit around the 30th or leading up to it, definitely six months from this point, you'll know what this is about. And again, to understand how this is impacting you uniquely, look at where that solar eclipse, where that new moon in Taurus is transiting your natal chart. Of course, I do readings, by the way, and I can help you with that if you are interested. I'll have the information at the end of this video for those of you who are interested, and it's down in the comments below. But let me say with this solar eclipse occurring in Taurus, this is collectively having to do with personal income, resources, values, self-worth. And that desire for stability and security, having the desire for creature comforts, having an inclination towards resisting change as well. And so this marks some new beginnings with these matters, bringing holy shifts impacting us over the long term. Now, let me remind you that this is a second Taurus Scorpio eclipse now. The first happened back in November of last year. So think back to what was going on at that time, because those situations may somehow resurface again for another go at resolving. But this time with some blessing or a new way is being made for a positive change in your life. Another important date to consider that may be relevant around this time is look at what happened when a similar eclipse occurred April 29th, 2014. April 29th, 2014. But we've also had eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus 
back in 2012 through 2014. So that's a time frame to consider uh, more broadly and also a little bit farther back down memory lane, 2003 through 2004. So consider the themes that were coming up for you around that time. And again, if you need to pause the video to take a moment to think back on that and get some context, please do so. Overall, we are reevaluating and strengthening our relationship with that which gives us a sense of security. Perhaps you're considering ways to increase your income, or perhaps you're considering ways to increase your sense of self-worth, regardless of income. Issues of your resources versus shared resources, your values versus other people's values, having the balance give and take are coming up. So this is a good time to consider what we really value and also a good time to possibly part with whatever isn't adding value or a sense of worthiness to you and your life. One interesting component of this is the energy will enhance the sensual side of life during this time. So you might want to indulge more in food, drinking, shopping, whatever floats your boat, okay? <laughs> whatever bubbles your bath, Taurus. <laughs> but as you're doing this, maybe go a little bit more deeply and think about what's pushing you to indulge. Are you doing this from a place of self-soothing, trying to give yourself maybe a false sense of security in the absence of real security? That might come through, you know, some kind of rude revelation that is being brought up around the time of this eclipse concerning insecurity issues. It could be that this solar eclipse is shining a light on what you can depend on and what you can't. Maybe there has been an issue with income, loss of income, loss of support, or lack of it. And you realize, I can't depend on this person. I can't depend on that job. Fill in the blank. And yeah, even though that sounds super negative, on the positive, it forces you to find your feet, become more self-reliant and empowered over the long term. Because remember, as I said from the beginning of this year, when the nodes shifted back in January, the south node is in Scorpio, north node is in Taurus. So we're all collectively being pushed to find our feet during this time and become more self-reliant. But again, that may come through some painful revelations about who can't be relied or depended upon. During this time, you might have, with the eclipse, a very strong desire to take some action. But the advice here is to be deliberate as much as you can in finding and finessing the flaws that are being revealed by this solar eclipse. What needs to end? What needs to begin? The eclipse will show you. It may be difficult to discern at first, but over the next six months, it becomes more glaringly obvious as you realize what you need to release and what you need to embrace. Some, as I said, may feel this more distinctly, more intensely from the start, and they have no choice but to blindly surrender to the shift, ready or not. Those most affected by this eclipse will be the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Now on the positive, during the same day as this eclipse, Venus will be conjunct Jupiter and Pisces. It's a lovely energy, exceptional for opportunities, good fortune. And so whatever's going on for you around this time, stay open to seeing the opportunities and good fortune that are opening up for you. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you have subscribed and you've activated the bell for notifications. Those of you who would like more personal hands-on help with how these transits uniquely impact your natal chart, you can reach out to me at the link that I will have pinned in the comments down below. Until next time, wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.